Good morning, guys. This is Joshua Packard coming to you live from my living room again today. Um, if you're you're just finding me today for the first time, I recognize that I don't look very professional, and this doesn't look very exciting. But I want you to know I'm going to get to the point. I'm not going to waste your time here. I'm going to try to challenge your thinking. We're going to go through scriptures, and we're going to keep it in context. So. Um, I'm glad you're here. If you just found me, if you're someone that came in, you know, this one, somebody that keeps watching, I hope you enjoy it. And you know, make sure to subscribe and give me your comments. Let me know what you want to hear. If you ask me questions, I'll I'll give you my best answer or give me answers to if you think I'm missing something. All right, well, we're gonna get right into it. I don't want to waste any more time. All right, we're gonna start with Hebrews 10:1 today because the writer of Hebrews would probably be uh, kicked out of the church as blasphemous. He he wouldn't be received very well, I don't think, by the theologians today. So, and you'll see why here in a minute. For the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. Let's stop right there. First of all, I want to key in on this. There was a perfect sacrifice made. The law wasn't able Jesus' perfect sacrifice has now purged your conscience. You should not have guilt or conscience of sins. Regardless of what anybody tells you, you're not a sinner anymore. Just quit, quit obeying your sins. Quit, quit even looking at them. Let's, I'm going to keep showing you why. I'm going to show you the fruitlessness of it here in a minute. Let's keep going. But in those sacrifices, there was a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he comes into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering you did not want, but a body you have prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you have had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin you did not want, neither did you have pleasure in them, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the body or through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Key in on that. We are sanctified <laughs> once for all. And this is very important. You have to be sanctified. There is not a process of sanctification. You're being made a, a tool of the Lord, that's for sure. But sanctification has to be completed. And I'll, I'll show you why in just a second. That means to be purified. And I'll, I'll show you why. Um... Okay, and he says every high pri or every priest stands daily ministering and, and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifices, one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. What? He says you were sanctified once for all, and on top of that he perfected forever them whom were sanctified. So, you have been sanctified and perfected. And this is very important that you believe this. Because if not, you can't have fellowship with God. Sorry. Because the veil is made by your works, by your hypocrisy. Hypocrisy comes from the position of sin or somebody that thinks they're not adequate. And their works are trying to become adequate, much like Cain. That's why Cain can never be accepted of God. He can never be pleasing to God because he, he could never have fellowship with them because he was completely false. Doing the works of the soil. So, for us, then, you have to come into the presence of God to be transformed. Outside of the presence of God, you're conformed, conforming to your own idea of what righteousness is. Inside of the presence of God, you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you're conscious of anything against you, you will not come into the presence of God, because you can't. Only the truth can be in God's presence. Only those that are naked and without shame can be before God. And it's not because he won't accept you, because he has. He proved it on the cross. And by this one offering forever, by which he sanctified you and perfected you. All past tense, by the way. What happens is, is you will not enter in because you choose your righteousness over his. You're not doing it on purpose, but it's the natural consequence of sin. Because if you don't think you're good enough to be pleasing to God, it's just like this, going on any date. Like... When you first meet a girl, or opposite a boy, whatever, but you first meet a girl and you're like, oh, excited, and you just, oh my God, but you're looking, look at me, I'm a country bumpkin. And this girl, she's got class and sophistication. So, 
you know what, I'm going to try to dress a little bit nicer. And I'm going to, you know, try to use big words when I'm around this girl in order to try to, you know, make myself fit in with her, well, which is good. And she might enjoy that. However, you can only, you can only hold up the facade for a while. But while you're in that facade, you cannot at all fellowship with her. You can't, she can never get to know you because you're fake from the beginning. Well, that's how it is with God, is if we come before him like that, we come by him fake, though he sees through everything, but you're not allowing yourself because you're obeying the expectation rather than the reality. So, I'm here today to tell you that Christ has sanctified you and perfected you forever for the purpose of you having the boldness to come before God without fear. Right now. Not only has he made the way, he's commanded you enter. Because that's the only way you're not denying his sacrifice. Because if you're still working for sins and your law and all the good righteous works of being a Christian, I mean a Christian with a, you know, quotation, but if you're still working to do these things, in your mind you're still condemned. If you're still condemned, that means you have not, though you confess Jesus might be your Savior, you have not appropriated his sacrifice. You have not received it and obeyed it and said, thank you. So now the end of this is now what kind of Christian works do we have to do if we're not supposed to go around and doing Christian works? Well, what you're going to go out and do is you're going to go ahead and be the truth. You're not going to be concerned about your outward works, whether or not people accept you and say, oh, this is a man of God or not, because you're going to be condemned on all sides. It doesn't matter. You'll never please anyone. So what has to happen is, is that you're going to go forth and show your weakness you know, I'm a douchebag. It's great. And people point it out and say, yeah, you're a douchebag. And you agree with them and say, absolutely. But my Lord has saved me, even though I'm a douchebag. So what does that say for them? That means they can approach God, even though they're douchebags. For so long, people have been so duped and misguided. I mean, even me, before I came to the Lord, what I knew, what I thought was I was expected to be righteous and holy and good before, you know, I could be a Christian. But this is not what God wants. He doesn't care about your goodness. He cares about your honesty. Because your honesty says that you are not trying to please men. You only are pleasing the one who has purchased you with his own blood. The one that has counted you worthy. And the one that has called you righteous and holy and unblameable. This is the man you obey. You teach others to do the same thing by your transparency. And I don't care. I don't care if you cuss. I don't care if you drink, you know, beers occasionally. I don't care if you smoke a little, whatever. I don't care. These things mean nothing before God. The truth is what matters before God. And I know I'm going to get a bunch of flack for that. You know, I personally, I don't drink. I don't smoke pot. I don't do anything. My life is like spotless. I'm married with a kid. I look like a complete just Christian, you know, perfection right now. But that's not, who cares? That doesn't mean anything. It, it, it's just you can't come and blame me and say, oh, you're a witness. You're teaching people to sin. Well, on the contrary, I'm not. I'm teaching them that they're righteous so they can believe it. And then they can approach God and be transformed according to the renewing of their mind. When you're pointing them at their sins and pointing out their sins, what you're doing is to encourage them to look at their sins. You're enlarging their iniquity and you're separating them from God, which means you are perpetuating their fallen state. And then you're beating them up. Whenever they go and they try to step outside of that comfort, when, when they do not conform to your image and they step outside of it, you beat them up for it. You guilt them about it. The ones that were entering the kingdom, you have prevented. And you yourself did not enter in. So those, those messages are strong. And, and Jesus said those to the religious people. You know, we got to take away this Jew-Christian thing because we're Jews. I mean, it's just the way it is. So people, I would love to talk to you more about it, but I'm trying to keep this thing under 10 minutes. So I love you all. Leave your comments. Um, tell me to, you know, go to hell if you want. I don't care. I want to hear what you got to say. And, uh, but more than anything, I want you guys to be free in Christ. I want you guys to be unafraid of the Lord that purchased you with his own blood. I want you to be like John when you're sitting at the Last Supper and you're reclining on Jesus. You're, you're cuddling with Jesus. John had that ability I mean, the audacity to cuddle with our Lord. I mean, what kind of man was Jesus that men felt comfortable enough to cuddle with him? And little children approached him like nothing. This is the way we need to approach God. He's proved his love for us. Now let's accept it and come, come open right now.
And there's my baby crying. That's uh, my cue to go. I love you guys. Don't forget to get to subscribe and give me your input. All right. Have a great day.